Hello everyone, I'm Felipe and in this episode of iOS Quick Start, we are going to take a look at one of the patterns that's being used a lot by the iOS community, the MVVM. Let's do this. If you had any experience with iOS development, you at least heard about MVC. No surprise on that because this is the most used pattern to develop to the platform. However, it has some issues. Let's take a look at it and see how MVVM can help us to solve them. MVC basically consists of the idea, like the name suggests, of the relationship between a model, a view, and a controller. In this pattern, the user interacts with the view, that one sends events to the controller, the controller then manipulates the model if needed, if there is any change in the model, the controller is notified, and it finally updates the view. This is great and works perfectly, but all the code to translate the data from the object to the format needed to feed the view is usually located in the view controller. This usually results in massive view controllers that are hard to manage and can become a nightmare in the future. There must be a better way of doing this, right? And the answer for this question is yes. And that's how you might have guessed already, MVVM. Created by Ken Cooper, John Gosman, and Ted Peters while working at Microsoft in 2005, this pattern was designed to take advantage of the Windows Presentation Foundation on the .NET framework. After that, it has been adapted and used by many developers around the world. To simplify this pattern, let's combine the view controller and the view to be one element called the view. To transform MVC in MVVM, a layer needs to be added between the view and the model, the view model. This new class will basically work as sort of a translator from the model. It would use all its data, process it, and feed the controller only the information needed to update the view. Let's see how that looks in code. Assume we have a simple view that shows the information of a dog. That's the dog's model. Here we have name, birth date, has pedigree, breed, and color. In the view we want to display the name in blue with a star in the end if the dog has pedigree, breed, color, and the description of the dog's age. If we use MVC, this will be our view controller. Here we have the method update screen being called on the view will appear method of our view controller. In it, we update the view with all the model attributes. To do that, we call the method to generate the name attribute of the string and the method to generate the age description. Remember, this code works perfectly fine, but let's see how MVVM would help us in this situation. On MVVM, we have this view model object. It is instantiated using a reference to the model and you can see here that we have all the translation code. The only things transparent to the controller are the final attributes that are going to be used to populate the screen. And this is the result for controller using the view model to populate the view. We just instantiate it and use it in the same update screen method. Of course, this is just a silly example, but it can already show the benefits of using this pattern. Now that we know what MVVM is, let's list some of its advantages. All the big advantages of MVVM are based on the fact that what we call translation code is now separated into a specialized object. This makes our view controllers to be smaller and therefore easily maintainable. It also makes our code more testable since all the logic to translate the model is concentrated in one place. It also makes changes on the UI and model level easier. It is very easy to change any of the ends being able to rely on having a translator and being responsible to make the bridge between those. Of course nothing is perfect, and MVVM will not be an exception to this rule. Let's talk a little bit about its problems. The pattern can be a bit of an overkill for simple UI operations, and can also become a problem in large applications. This pattern can also result in a considerable amount of memory consumption, depending on its usage. And that's it. Let's recap what we have seen so far. MVCs are great, but if the view requires a lot of information from view controllers, it can get big and become a nightmare to manage. MVVN could help. Created by some pretty smart folks at Microsoft, MVVN can be used to fix this issue. MVVN brings to the table the idea of a view model. This class works as a translator, containing all the logic to transform the data contained in the model to the one needed to populate the view. This approach brings some advantages like more manageable, testable, and decoupled code base. You need to use this pattern with caution because it can also be an overkill or a memory issue. That's all for today. I hope I have helped you to understand better MVVM. 
The links to all material used to make this video are in the description. If you need more details, make sure to take a look at those. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. If you like this, let me know by liking this video and subscribe for more content. Thanks and good coding.